Hey, welcome to Growing Lots Urban Farm. So my name is Stefan Meyer, and this has been a project uh, for this summer in 2010. And uh, as you can see, we're kind of in the fall era right now, so things are kind of slowing down a bit, but yet uh, we'll still show you what's kind of been going on. So Growing Lots is a experimental urban farm project right here on top of an asphalt parking lot. And this parking lot is a part of a larger four acre redevelopment that is going to be occurring for the next six to seven years by Seward Redesign. And they were really interested in trying to look at urban agriculture, the economics of urban farming what can be done, how much time does it take, and how much money does it take. So what we have here is one example of exactly that. So basically, this spring, we started, uh, actually late spring, early summer, is when we started hauling in soil, and I basically built up this site. And you see several different things going on here. For one, right here, these were melon bins, which were made out of fencing, straw, and soil. And then, as you can see, I had them scattered all down the pavement, and then the melons just went out on top of the asphalt. Uh, it worked really well, uh, aside from the small issue of squirrels liking watermelons more than humans. So, uh, <laughs> but that being said, it was uh, one example of how you can actually do this right on top of an old driveway, perhaps, or a cement slab or a porch that gets good sun. And the same concept you'll see right over here is the potato towers, which again, were they're an interesting um, permaculture element, because in permaculture you look to maximize your functions and grow as much food as possible in the small square footage. And so what you see here is potatoes were planted on the inside of here, and earlier in the summer before they died back, the potatoes would grow out the sides. Then I planted kale and eggplants and basil and other crops on the top. And at the same time, they're also my fence posts on top of this asphalt parking lot so that I don't have to drive stakes into the asphalt. And so what you see is a basically multifunctional element in the landscape. Um, so we're maximizing food production vertically. I'm using them for a couple purposes, and they're also aesthetically pleasing, although they're looking a little bit raggedy these days. Uh, another really great example of what I use here in growing lots is uh, what's called the biointensive gardening and farming method. So you plant really densely, and you do this to maximize your yield per square foot, which in an urban environment is vital. Um, so you can actually see right here when you look down, what we see in this fall planted bed, you have pak choy, you have cabbage, you have cauliflower, you have lettuce along the side, and then in between them are a bunch of radishes. So as the radishes uh, get ripen up, they get pulled about the same time that the cabbage and the pak choy are getting bigger and would start shading out the radishes. So this is kind of a both biointensive and it's also called intercropping, meaning we're putting one crop in between another crop and you're using them to uh, basically maximize your production. But uh, so anyways, back to the process here. As you can see, what I did is in the spring I laid down a landscape fabric uh, right over the asphalt which would help prevent the roots from directly interacting with our lovely asphalt top here and then basically just brought in soil it was actually a mixture of black soil, uh, black dirt, uh, manure and leaf compost and then I built up the beds about, about foot to foot and a half and basically just planted right into them then I filled in the, uh, the pathways with straw. Now, at first I was concerned that uh, there would actually be a lot of issues with drainage uh, because the fact that I'm sitting on top of an asphalt parking lot. But surprisingly enough, despite our very intense and heavy rainfall storms, sometimes up to three to four inches within 24 hours, it just, this farm just sucked that water right up and I never had a single issue all summer long with drainage which is something that really surprised me, but also pleased me immensely. <laughs>
and so, you got some CSA shares to sell? Yeah, and so that's basically what I've done with this produce is I've constructed, I've run it as a CSA share model, which is community supported agriculture. And this means that my share members in the spring actually buy into the farm, they buy into the season, and then throughout the next uh, 15 to 20 weeks, they get a fresh delivery or a fresh uh, box of vegetables straight from the farm every single week. And my members actually come here to the farm, so they actually get to watch the farm grow and their food grow throughout the entire season, uh, which is something a little bit different than rural CSAs where people don't often go to the farm and they miss that vital connection. So this first year I had seven uh, CSA members, which was, uh, you know, a great start, kind of a slow start for a late season and a first year, but things went excellent. I really feel, I really feel good about it, and the members have just, they tell me they've had a great experience, and to me that's, it's not just the food that I'm growing, I'm growing an experience. So, Very cool. Um, Show me what you got over, growing over here. Okay, yeah, so come on over and we'll take another look. So as I've had a lot of problems with uh, three main pests this year, rabbits, squirrels, and the nice, nasty little vole that's been eating every one of my beets. But, so uh, again, what you see here is a lot of, uh, a lot of intercropping. So here uh, were green beans that were planted, and these were lettuces that were planted. And uh, what I did is I let the lettuces actually all go to seed. As you can see, all the lettuces are starting to flower. And then I'll collect the seed from the lettuce once they dry out. And that is a great way to reduce costs the next year is by saving my own lettuce seed. Um, and uh, so then if you kind of just come over here. So in here we have radishes, we have some peas, we have a whole bed of arugula, which will be going to my CSA shares for next uh, next week, which will be my last CSA uh, pickup for the the season. Uh, you have some beautiful rainbow chard, a couple things of lettuce, and so you can see everything is very densely planted. Um, and so of course when you're doing that, you're sucking a lot of fertility from the soil. So that's why it's absolutely vital that you pay a lot of attention to your soil fertility management program when it comes to biointensive farming and gardening. So how did you do that? So my method is kind of a, has several approaches. One, I am a firm believer in, in composted manure. I think animal manure really adds to the soil. In, in many ways, it adds to the character of the soil. Um, at the same time, I do use a, uh, an organic fertilizer. It's actually a Minnesota local uh, or fertilizer it's called Sustain out of uh, Cannon Falls, Minnesota. And it's made from uh, turkey waste, so turkey poop. Yeah. Um, but again, it's a, a great local organic fertilizer. And uh, so I, do, I did mix that in as well. And another component is adding just, you know, making compost, adding in compost. Um, making compost tea, which really aids the microbial life in the soil, and then of course using cover crops at different points in the season. And uh, right now, I don't I don't have too many cover crops incorporated, but that is uh, one of my goals for next year is to really start focusing on cover crop and and follow, following soil. Very cool. So, yeah, I mean, if you uh, come on down, we can just kind of. Scan off to the left, you can see some beautiful colors. Um, again, you can see I'm letting, a, the, uh, this was a, a bed of lettuce that I actually harvested out of for my CSAs for about four weeks. And then finally I just let it start going and flowering and going to seed. Um, now whether or not it, it will actually finish its cycle before the, uh, the frost come, eh, it's hard to say. Yeah, we're supposed to get a frost tonight, so we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, so you could, there's again, you can see like cucumbers. And again, one of the things in biointensive is you are trying to maximize your vertical space. So, with the uh, cucumbers this year, they were basically done up on a bamboo trellising system using these little tiny clips right in here, just like that. 
that attach to the string, and then the, then you just slowly clip them up as the uh, cucumbers grow. Now again, they're they're looking a little rough right now. They're pretty much uh, said sayonara to the season. They're ready to go to their eternal rest. <laughs> um, but otherwise, you know, it's. Uh, did you just throw in some flowers for cosmetics? Or yep, yep. Uh, sunflowers are. I threw in a couple of my absolute favorites, which would be sunflowers, and this particular variety is called the Ring of Fire. And I, also down there, you can see the amaranth, which is another one of my absolute favorites. As many of you probably know, amaranth grain or seed is a very protein rich grain. So there are lots of things you can do with it. You can turn it into flour, bake it into bread. Um, but I love it because it's absolutely gorgeous and it's always welcome in my garden. Um, so that's Growing Lots Urban Farm. And uh, you, can all, you can find out more about me at www.growinglots.blogspot.com.